Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we will continue discussion on thrust loading. Please remember when I am talking about thrust loading T by W, I should keep in mind another parameter wing loading will also play an important role and a good designer will select the right combination based on what is the final mission requirement. right? If you recall, when as a designer I want to perceive wing loading, I know that if W by S is low, that means lots of area is available to generate lift to balance the weight. So, naturally your minimum speed required to maintain lift equal to weight will reduce, your takeoff speed also will reduce, but at the same time we should know that as I am having low wing loading, area of the wing is relatively large. So, large surface area, more skin friction, more drag, so more power. So, that is a conflict. Okay. You could see for a designer, there will be many times a conflict to arrive at a combination of T by W and W by S for simple reason. I want W by S to be low, that means S is relatively high and this amounts to my V stall which is 2 W by S rho C L will be low or be lower if W by S is less. From designer's perspective, if large area of wing is there, so that will produce larger lift for a given dynamic pressure and angle of attack. The moment W by S is low, we have this advantage, we have advantage of V stall or any operational requirement which is based on V stall, for example, takeoff, landing, they also will get the advantage of V stall being low, we will have lower takeoff speed, lower landing speed, but we know that because W by S is low, so S is high. So larger area, larger skin friction, so larger drag and again to compensate that we need to have higher thrust. It goes without doing much an effort that if W by S is large, that means area is relatively less, if I assume both the configuration having same weight. Area less means yes, V stall will increase, but the advantage one I could see that area being less, skin friction drag will be less, so my thrust requirement may be lower. So for a high speed airplane, you will find W by S will be large. If you want to accelerate fast, W by S will be large. Of course, as you have larger area and if you club it with larger aspect ratio, then a structural problem also comes. I am not going into those details now, but whenever I am talking about T by W thrust loading, you should keep back of your mind the wing loading W by S, which we will be dealing exhaustively after one or two lectures. Right. So, let me come back to thrust loading some salient points. If you see this is our warm up warm up and take off and this is climb and this part is cruise. This is the mission profile and if I put 0, 1 and 2, you have seen that W1 by W0, in this case W0 which is W takeoff. For a designer, it is important to arrive at 
some number w take off because that becomes a weight and then he tries to find out what is w by s take off that is the basic parameter with which he starts designing the airplane similarly as just now we'll be talking about t by w take off that is understand this take off conditions why this is important if i give you a simple example with w by s take off you know this w not is w take off so w1 by w not this value could be let's say 0.97 that means some fuel has been consumed in this sector in this segment and then w2 by w1 which is climb and let's say that ratio is 0.985 Because to climb up to 0.2, this ratio W2 by W1 is less than 1 because some fuel is consumed. But if I want to know what is W2 by W0, which is equal to W2 by W takeoff, that will be what? That will be simply W1 by W0 into W0 to W2 by W1. I repeat w2 by w take off or w not they are same it will be w1 by w not into w2 by w1 because please keep in mind w not and w take off are same and if i do this this will give me 0.97 multiplied by 0 0.985 and that may be approximately 0 0.956 please check yourself what is the message? Message is W2 by W0 is 0.956 or I write it like this W2 by W takeoff is 0.956 and then I also understand W2 here I am talking about W cruise at the beginning by W takeoff this value is 0.956. So, if I am interested in W takeoff by S, so I should translate this W cruise to W takeoff. That is, what should have been the W takeoff so that I meet these conditions. And from here, you understand, you have to simply W takeoff required would be W whatever cruise divided by this 0.956 factor. So this is a general common mistake we do in the class and this is just not a numerical mistake that is why I am stressing it. When you are designing an airplane, these points, this say point 2 will tell you at the start of the cruise, it is expected to have W2 by W1, 0.985 that means this much 1 minus 0.985 whatever number comes that much into whatever weight airplane had, if I multiply I will get the weight at cruise or I say if I really want W to be that much from any requirement I should ensure that W takeoff is sufficient enough so that after going this operation W cruise is what you are aiming for right. That is why all the data you should convert into the takeoff conditions. You will also see that it is interesting that when you are cruising from here to here, let us say 3 point number 3, again the fuel consumption will be there. So, which W by S takeoff should we take? So, we take the average. What is the designer's approach? This is fairly simple to understand. Now, if I go backward again from here, I switch over to thrust because I told you we will be talking a little more about W or T by W take off and since I told you, you should not only see T by W separately, whenever you are thinking of T by W, think of W by S as well, make it a practice right. That is why I am also 
moving from T by W to W by S again coming back to T by W just to give you a feel that never commit a mistake of thinking T by W separately always T by W immediately check what is W by S I am looking for like C L the moment you think C L do not think C L separately think C D also so C L by C D you should see so that is that will help a designer to build confidence and in a that is that is the right approach in my opinion right. If I similar thing if I do for T by W take off now we have understood how to correct W take off because you will have W cruise here some value convert into W take off here you have some thrust at the sea level. So you know T by W is how much but T by W require that too T by W require that too which is nothing but cruise equal to 1 by C L by C D and this value may be around 0 0.08 if I am flying at C L by C D more than 10 around 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1 whatever the number could be. So, that is the requirement prescribed at this point. But what will be T by W take off as I was telling you have to convert all these requirements into a T by W take off or W by S take off. What is the understanding? Understanding is this thrust will vary with altitude. So, we need to see the engine and see I want T by W some number I see that T by W cruise is at an altitude let us say rho equal to uh, density of air at 10,000 feet it may be 0.7 kg per meter cube around that and you know the thrust available at that altitude will not be the thrust which is available at the sea level. So, you have to again convert that taking the altitude effect from here to the sea level. So, when I am talking about T by W takeoff, I am all talking at reference of sea level, okay, right. For example, if you are if you are designing an airplane with T by W takeoff, but you are going to take off from lay or some places, you have to correct it because that is not sea level conditions, right. So, what do you do? You correct the thrust seeing the chart generally it follows density at altitude by density at sea level because as you go higher and higher the density of air reduces and hence your thrust also changes. There are calibration chart the engine manufacturer will give you this chart and those things are available but as a designer you know okay roughly it will follow that. Right. So, you pick your initial concept conceptual design based on this and then you can always see the chart which are available right. So, in a nutshell if I try to make it little more formal with this understanding I can write T by W take off is equal to T by W cruise if I am talking about cruise I am converting cruise to cruise T by W to T by W take off because I know both thrust and W at cruise needs to be translated to take off conditions. So, this will be this multiplied by W cruise by W take off into T take off by T cruise. This should be back of your mind and you should have some number for this, some number for this as a designer, some number for this and you know how much T by W take off the engine should be able to deliver at sea level conditions. Okay. This is one I thought and the second thing uh, the last class I did mention in the last class we are talking about Vmax we are asking a question 
assuming that the aircraft is strong enough to fly at V max, meaning thereby the aircraft is strong enough to withstand the dynamic pressure and forces, which is a combination of the altitude at which it is flying as well as the speed. Right. So, we found that fundamentally we know that if this is thrust and drag and it goes like this and the thrust is constant almost I am assuming with V thrust is not changing typically jet engine behavior then this is the point where I say this corresponds to V max full throttle so assuming that thrust is full full throttle I have given. But remember if this is at an altitude rho equal to sea level rho 1 if I want to have a V max for rho equal to rho 2 which is let us say 10,000 feet in that case what will happen both this as well as this will change this man will try to come down and this will try to shift this way because density of air is less density of air is less means the drag part will be less however same time thrust available from the engine also will be less it will come down so this point will change so those are the salient things you should carefully see and you know that if you want to fly at same CL then you know the expression how to get what is the equivalent speed. What I was, I was uh, telling in the last class I want to come back to that immediately once we were trying to see how do I find out we said thrust equal to drag so that is C D naught plus K C L square so C L square by pi aspect ratio E right and C L you know equal to W by dynamic pressure half rho V square into S. By now you know that once I write a drag polar expand a drag polar like this I have made some assumptions and they are low speed plane the wing is struggling to be near elliptic wing and definitely it is at a lower speed. But when I want to see what is that speed at which this drag and this thrust they matches this equation gives. So, for V max I ask a question I have given T max full throttle at a given Q infinity that is dynamic pressure which is I always think whenever I, I am talking about V max higher speed immediately should be careful enough you should start thinking in terms of dynamic pressure because structural limitation comes from dynamic pressure. Right. So, I do this then we have shown that that expression comes to something like this T by A W max. into W by S plus W by S T A by W max minus 4 C D naught by pi aspect ratio E and this is to the power half. As I have told you, you can refer Anderson book introduction to flight in fact, you do not require it, you can also do it from here. When I was discussing this, it is very obvious that V max, if you want to increase V max, T A by W should increase, right. And also, you see W by S should also increase. W by S increase means what? S is less, so drag is less, naturally, V max will increase. So, this is consistent, this is also consistent. We were bothered about what is this term for simple reason we are talking about T by W, we are talking about W by S, but where is that aerodynamics, where is that aerodynamic efficiency which will also dictate how do I achieve V max. Conceptually if drag is low then you can accelerate fast right. So, somewhere that C L by C D has to play a role somewhere it must be hiding 
Yes. Any aircraft design, any expression, L by D max will be present either explicitly or implicitly. And a designer takes maximum advantage of that. So, whenever you are designing, whenever seeing an analytical expression, try to look for where is L by D max, what is W by S, they are hiding. Because those are initial design parameters which a designer can easily pick. Right? You remember in the initial part, we decided how to get roughly the value of L by D max. Right? So, that exercise I told you to do, I do not know how many of you have done it, but let me do it. If you see this expression 4 C D naught by pi E aspect ratio, suppose I am flying at flying at C L by C D maximum. What is the meaning of C L by C D flying maximum? If I am cruising, I know T equal to thrust required equal to W by C L by C D. So, when I say I am flying at C L by C D max, that means I am talking about thrust required minimum. Right? And it is a aerodynamically most efficient configuration when C L by C D is maximum aerodynamically. And you know that for C L by C D to be maximum, you need to fly at C L equal to under root C D naught by k, all this thing you have done in your performance course also, which essentially means you fly at a C L such that your induced drag coefficient and parasite drag they are of equal magnitude. So, for C L by C D max, C L equal to C D naught by k and now see what is C L by C D max that will be under root C D naught by k by C D and you also know that when C L by C D is maximum, then I could see that C D equal to C D naught plus k C L square. So, this is equal to C D naught plus C D naught that is 2 C D naught. Right? So, I now write it like this under root C D naught by k divided by 2 C D naught. Say this and keep your focus here. We want to see what this bunch of numbers tells us aerodynamically. So, now, so if I write C L by C D max, which is nothing but L by D max, which is equal to under root C D naught by k by 2 C D naught. So, if I take C L by C D square, which is max of course, which is equal to L by D max square will be equal to C D naught by k divided by 4 C D naught, which is equal to 4 C D naught square, yes, right. And also, what is k? So, k is 1 by pi aspect ratio E. Please do not uh, forget that term what we are looking for which I have erased here 4 C D naught by pi aspect ratio E. So, if I do this I get C D naught goes up. So, this implies L by D max square will be equal to pi aspect ratio E by 4 C D naught. Let me check this. This becomes 1 4 C D naught. So, this is 4 C D naught by k equal to L by D max square or L by D square max. You see that C L by C D square equal to L by D max square equal to C D naught by k by 4 C D naught square. So, C D naught get cancelled. So, I get L by D square max 
L by D square max max equal to pi aspect ratio E by force D naught, but we are looking for force D naught by pi aspect ratio E. So that is one by L by D max square. Oh, sorry, L by D square max. So in that expression, now if I come here, we have derived this expression. We are looking for this term, and this term we see is nothing but reverse of this. So it varies inversely with L by D max square. And since this is a negative term, so as you increase L by D max, influence of this this term goes down. So it helps in having higher V max. So now that puzzle is over. Yes, for V max I need T by W as large as possible, W by S as large as possible, so wing as small as possible. And also I want from this L by D max should be as high as possible. Analytically it looks very, very nice, but to achieve a configuration which will satisfy you all these three things to your desire may not be always possible and that is where a designer has to play an important role how he optimizes this. Okay? That is why whenever you are seeing this expression just do not solve an assignment problem. The moment you want to increase T by W ask yourself what it means for increasing T by W means you are going for a bigger engine, bigger engine will also increase the weight cost will increase, maintenance may be difficult. W by S if I want to increase lesser wing area, that means I need higher speed, higher V stall to balance lift equal to weight and L by D max, can I really fly at that L by D max all the time for a given aspect ratio, is it possible? So all these things you have to ask your question and also silently you see here, the C D naught value Do not try to relate to L by D max square. You may start wasting time on CD naught. But please, uh, that may be misleading. So it's always better, whatever analytical expression you are using, you please see what is inside, what sort of information you get. Right? I thought I must mention this to you. Let us see how a designer should play around with these analytical expressions. Uh, let me do a, give an example. If I talk about rate of climb, let us see. Rate of climb, right. For a conventional airplane, and let us take an example of a jet driven airplane. Okay. Rate of climb, when you say it is, if you write this equation, if this man is going like this, this is a drag, you are all familiar with this sort of expression, this is flight path angle and this is lift. So, I write T minus D minus W sin gamma is equal to M dV by dt, this is the acceleration along V direction and these are the active forces, right. And I am saying simplified thing, I am going for a steady climb, that is with constant speed, rectilinear motion I put it 0. So, I say T minus D is equal to W sin gamma and we know that I can write it as V sin gamma equal to T V minus D V by W. This is nothing but rate of climb. This expression does not tell me about anything T by W, uh, w by S, although T by W you could see here. Right? You could see that yes, if you want to increase rate of climb, this expression I can visualize as T by W into V minus D by W into V. So, okay, T by W is more, rate of climb will be more, it will climb faster, all fine at a given speed V. But where is W by A is hiding? 
because I said told you whenever you see T by W, look for where is W by S. Right. So now I see here rate of climb is equal to T by W into V minus Q infinity direct pressure into S into C D by W into V. So immediately I could see the rate of climb equal to T by W into V minus Q infinity C D by W by S. Okay, this is now if you want to see what is the effect of W by S, what is the message you are getting? If W by S is large, that means W by S is large means what? Your area is less, area of the wing is less. Okay? That is why W by S is large for a given W. If W by S is large, so this term will be less, so your rate of climb will improve. If W by S is small, the larger wing, this term will become more negative and your rate of climb will, all, will reduce. Do you see the connection now? A designer will see this. A designer should be able to extract meaningful information for his synthesis. It should not just depend upon equations and then writing program code and looking for numerical methods. You cannot be a designer. Okay? With the minimum manipulation here and there arrangement, you should get the maximum information. That is where we say this man has an intuition. This man has, has that amount of smartness to manage all those conflicts because he understands with minimum effort, yes, this is going to happen. Order of magnitude, he gets an understanding. The story does not end here. If you want to see in this, where is aerodynamic efficiency playing a role? As I told you, T by W, W by S, always check the third frame, where is this aerodynamic efficiency? Because after all, it is a aerodynamic vehicle. So, aerodynamic efficiency has to be there hand holding our mission of flying from one point to another. So, we, try, we must try to see even if we, it is hiding in a disguise, try to get it, you may get more information. If I see this expression, I am just doing a, an exercise to give you a feel how a designer should uh, try to get maximum information. Right? Okay. Q infinity S C D V by W and that is this expression I am talking about here. Because here T by W into V is there and here C D is there. So, I am first attacking that term. And during climb, I am assuming that C L equal to 2 W by rho V square S. That is lift equal to weight. But you understand that lift is not equal to weight, this is lift. So, lift is actually equal to W cos gamma. I am assuming gamma small or small climb. So, I am taking liberty of writing C L as this. Correct? This is lift and this is the weight. So, this is W cos gamma. So, if it is flying rectilinear path with constant uh, speed, so the lift should be sufficient enough to balance the weight. And this lift will be less than the weight for it as compared to when it is cruise. So, we say induced drag in climb is also less, all these things you know. So, if I use this expression, then I can write V equal to under root of 2 W by S rho C L and that V I use here. So, Q infinity into S C D into 2 W by S rho C L by W and immediately you start seeing C L and C D appearing. Right? From that expression C L was not seen. So, you do not get the relationship C L by C D that field. So, you can start putting this number here. You can also can put for Q infinity you can write half rho V infinity 
into again 2w by s by rho cl and then s into cd and all this term here. That means what I am doing for q infinity I am putting half rho v infinity into v, v I am writing like this. I can do also I can write q infinity as half rho v infinity square. So, I release this I can see like this another C L term comes here right. So, that is from where you have to pick what is the C L by C D combinations right. And you should not be surprised that you get something very very interesting. So, keep it a habit like this of expanding it rationally and try to see where is C L by C D or C L 3 by 2 C D all these things hiding. I leave this exercise to you and see from this expression can I comment anything on C L by C D or C L 3 by 2 by C D some aerodynamic ratios which will inspire a designer to maintain so the rate of climb is maximum right. So, I hope you will do that in any case I will do in the next class. But I will always prefer before I come for next class, we do some homework and get some expression there we get we get connected very well right. Thank you very much.